blessings before this wonderful message from my father in the lord late archbishop bensi idaosa i'd like to share information about anointedtube.com with you the number one christian video sharing website today anointedtube.com this is a powerful site believed to be the top most Christian video sharing website in the world today. It is ranked as one of the best video sharing website according to available data. It hosts videos of preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from all around the world. You can as well share our video on all social media platforms. The World Database of Christian Precious, positively touching and changing lives around the world. It is a great Christian video sharing website. The Lord bless you. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. favor before I start to preach tonight you know the Bible talk of scatter sheep so all of you far the back move forward move forward move forward fill every seat in the front and we are not staying long tonight I have a parcel from heaven I want to deliver it that's my job amen and I'd like to say this to you. If you are very close to Pastor Gene Thompson and Dr. James Thompson, the husband, the two senior pastors here, the woman among them, my wife calls her my twin sister. They weren't born the same day. 
They weren't even born in the same continent. But they have blood covenant with them in the ministry. The reason Mrs. Idahusa calls her my covenant sister, that's the word. That's what he called her, my covenant sister. I'm glad I remember what she says. If she hears this tape, she's going to say, that's not what I say. You know, women, <laughs> women can misrepresent you 200 times. But if you misrepresent them once, you're in trouble. I can say anything. I never make mistake with what my wife says. But she's going to say, that's why when you're a preacher, you can't lie before your wife. You can, you can preach anything, fire, hell, anything. Your wife will be looking at you. Because you get home and say, I wish you are what you are saying. <laughs> That's why it's very important that you are whom you say you are. Because she owes you no allegiance to tell you that you are lying. So, but the reason is because she believed that among all the American women preachers she has seen, this woman and Mrs. Osborne practice righteousness. She believes that wholeheartedly. My wife is a very strong woman. And when she says, I love you, that's all. Because she has no reason to tell you I love you. She doesn't owe you anything. I can tell you I love you if I don't love you. But my wife will never say I love you. If she doesn't, mine is just easy going. I'm, I'm there. I'm for everybody. My wife is not for everybody. My wife just, hi, bye-bye. Finish. I can spend 200 hours asking you your job, your family, even when I'm not at peace. But my wife has no time. She selects friends. In 124 countries we've been to, she has very few friends because she doesn't want to be betrayed. You can betray me three million times, I'm still me, but she doesn't have strength to be betrayed once. She believes that this journey is a sincere journey. So what she did tonight, she didn't do it because I have need. I want to clear that. If I have financial need, I will not come to Washington. God is my witness. If I was really in need of money, I would not buy a ticket and come. I know how to get money without working for it. I'm so close to the revelation God has shown me in the world. And if I need $50,000 this night, I will not go to Dallas. I will get it. I know how. I wouldn't steal. I wouldn't lie. I'll get it. Because you will reach a stage in your life, everything that concerns you will be God. And once it's God, you can never face defeat. And sometimes if that need is not met, that is delay. But delay will never turn to denial. Did you hear it? It's like a woman married... 10 years, 14 years, 15 years, 20 years, no child. And the devil lied to her, you are barren. A day will come a man who have the gift of release will just come and say, you are not barren. Be pregnant. And the next thing she's pregnant. That means it was delayed till all you would have done carelessly have been finished with. Then when that baby come, that's a princess. That's a prince. Can somebody say Amen. I want to thank you ministers in the music department. As we travel around, we acknowledge people in different phases of ministry and areas. And I find that those who take worship, praise, and choir ministry or music ministry as a calling, they are there night and day in season and out of season. Those who came to see, we come and go. 
Those who come to serve will stay. Are you hearing what I'm saying? In your case, you have come to serve and not to come and see. And in serving God, you see his hand in action. I encourage you to be steadfast in the love of God. Be steadfast in the call of God. He who hath called you is faithful. Faithful is he that called you. He will do it. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Faithful is he. You see, I've been singing in this ministry 10 years now, 15 years, 7 years, 5 years. You are not wasting time. You are singing because God needs your voice. The people in the cemetery, grave, don't sing. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? I want to establish a foundation before I speak briefly tonight and go. Those of you who are committed, keep your commitment because the God you are committed to is a rewarding God. And very faithful. He is very, 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 very faithful. The next thing I'd like to say would be this. In every ministry, universally, I just give you two examples. Beverly Shea have been singing for Billy Graham now 51 years. And Cliff Barrows have been introducing Billy Graham 51 years. These two men have been asked severally, when are you starting your own? You've been introducing one man for 40 years, 45 years. When will you start your ministry? And I heard Cliff Barrow once say, I've never had an honor in my life than the one I have to introduce Dr. Graham. He said, why invent a new wheel if I can flow with the existing one? Are you hearing what I'm saying? There's a woman in Tulsa, Ruth Brooks. Ruth Brooks. She's been secretary to Ora Robert for 49 years. Secretary. When Ora Robert said, good morning, write a letter to Professor Idahosa. In five minutes, that letter will be on, on his table. Everything Ora is thinking, just anything he's thinking to tell me, that woman will put it in writing and he will sign. Nothing to add. She lives inside him by the revelation of God. She's married, I think, with three children. And the first child is about 47 or 46. She's older than Richard Robert, who is now the president of the university. And if you offend anybody in that ministry, if you offend that woman, you are finished. Now, you can't tell me that you can be a man's secretary for 49 years without the man offending you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Did, did you hear what I'm saying? But you are so committed to God through that man that you have no way else to go, not because you have no choice. I wish I can speak English. <laughs> you, you are not looking for elsewhere because one way is right. Because one way is God. If you are a person committed to anything with divided mind, you never last. And when you think, maybe if I live here to another ministry, to another job, to another place, is where my blessing is going to come? Maybe. But for me who know God, the step of a righteous person is ordered by God. I have preached 
using two lives since yesterday. The first man I preached with was Moses. How many of you were here when I preached about Moses yesterday? What did Moses do? You, you, you were here? Moses had a rod? You think, you think that rod was good? Do you have your own rod now? You think your rod is good? Now God said to Moses, stretch forth your hand. Is that hand good? Do you have a hand? Have you started to stretch it? Yes! Now, let me deal with Moses, for example. Immediately Moses' pregnancy took place. The king heard. And he said, this one I must kill. I'm dealing on divine intervention tonight. Your best way of living. Say that. Divine intervention. My best way. Of living. Good. Now, Moses is a baby. Just blood and water, and perhaps with bones just forming in the belly. The king heard that the Jewish woman was pregnant. And he made a law and said, All children from the age of one hour to two years. From now, from today, when they are born, they must be killed. Just because of Moses. Well, Moses have no power inside belly to say, I can't be born. I don't want to be killed. God allowed him to be forming and forming and growing and growing and growing. When he was born, the Bible said, the midwives that we are told kill him said this is a proper child say that to yourself I wish you knew what I said say it to yourself I say I wish you heard what I said thank you say it now the king said I've given you knife, kill. And the midwife said, we will use the knife to do good. We wouldn't kill with it. They told his mother to rush him out and run away. She ran and took this baby, bought the basket, put the sheets inside, put baby's clothing and wrapped this child and went to the river. Life of Moses, the one I preached, the man with rod now. <laughs> and threw him into the river. No guide, no guard. Guide and guard, you have it. Huh? <laughs> there was nobody to guide him. And no one to guard him. How will you say that in God? God. All right. <laughs> All right. Let's put it in, in simple language. Nobody to follow him. To say, flow this way. And nobody to protect him. One is guard, one is guide. All right? He had none. The mother threw him to destiny. And said, I've done my part. Your father made me pregnant. I've delivered you now. They don't want to see you. Baba. Think of what life is. That that child began to flow in the river. And destiny had it that the king's daughter who wants to kill Moses, suddenly got up and said, Mates, mates, I want seven of you. Follow me to the river. I want to go and have my bath. And the king's ushers cleared the whole road. No man should be on the street because the princess was going to have her bath. Everybody ran into the house. And she got to the river. Before she removed her clothes to start bathing, a man came in a basket. 
and raised his feet. And she said, who was that? Who was that? They said, let's see. And the child flowed with no guide and guard and flowed to where she was. And she looked at the basket and said, I've gotten me a son. Was she pregnant? No. Did she get married? No. Does she have a husband? No. But did she say she has a child? Yes. yes. She took this boy. That's the child the father is looking for. And brought the child to the house. And the father said, congratulations. <laughs> Somebody give me a shout if you... I said, give me a shout of hallelujah. And the father said, this is so nice. I've got me a grandson. <laughs> and he said, the, the daughter said, I need a woman who have breast, water, milk to feed. And the father said, employ. And she came out and said, where can we get a woman? And a little girl said, I know where you can find a woman. And he went and called Moses' mother. And the king employed her to feed her own son with her own breath. Then the woman said, I'm married and I have a husband. We need a good home. And the man said, go bring your husband. Moses, the sister, the mother... The father had presidential suite in the king's palace, paid for by the king, the work of God. Somebody say hallelujah. You're coming to harvest. Your life is in line with destiny. It's not, it's not because you couldn't find another church. Actually, there are too many churches. But you were looking for a place that your life can be molded. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Uh, the Knesset be called the home office for me yesterday when they closed morning service. And they said, the sanctuary was jammed. The choir, when they finished talking, I said, Debbie, do you know how many countries... I have been this year, and you phone after every service in Benin, and they say the same thing. I have, I have traveled more than many preachers put together. Many, many preachers put together as one. I have done more traveling than all of them combined, than many of them combined. But I leave home because the church is not my own. I don't protect the ministry. The reason is, it's God's ministry. And God made me general overseer and gave me grace not to look on what I have achieved. I have one of the best homes you can think of in this world, but I don't sleep it. Because when you come to where I am, life is no more your own. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now Moses stayed in the house he was wanted when he was in the belly. And the man who was looking for him didn't know for 40 years. He became the prince in the palace, gave him armies, gave him everything. And one day this boy got up and said, that's enough. I have proved to you that your hunting me cannot hurt me. Oh, God. Did you hear that? The fact that the devil has been hunting for you for years doesn't mean he can hurt you. Don't forget to give me that, Debbie. You used to be my secretary. Now, now that's, that's Moses. Everyone say, that is Moses. Say that, that's Moses. 
Now say with me, it's good for me. Everything God put in the Bible is for our own example. So that the day we believe what he did for one man, that can become our own time. Say amen. amen. I preached yesterday about David. Where's the head of that? Where's that illustration? Is that in here? Well, let me have that one. Now, final from Dr. G. Now, I said, I said to you yesterday, please put your eyes on me. Don't look at them. I'm the one preaching. <laughs> <laughs> A man called Goliath was in town. That's not what we are looking for. Never mind. Okay. Thank you for that. That's head one. We are going to have head two. Thank you, brother. Good. Now, now, David was a shepherd boy. His father had more than seven sons, according to the Bible. And whatever is in the Bible is correct. God said loud, Go to Jesse's house. And anoint a king. And this man, like many American prophets, went to Jesse's house. Immediately he saw a man, seven foot two. He said, that's he. Oh, yes, come on. Bow your head. And God said, please don't pour my oil away. <laughs> He's not the one. Second one came. That's not the one. Third one came. That's not the one. Fifth, sixth, seventh. And every time he wants to anoint, he will hear the voice. Don't. This is not. The man who was producing his sons got tired. And... The man who was anointing got tired. Did you hear me? So the, the Samuel finally said, Don't you have any other child? He said, The one left is inconsequential. He's a bush boy. He's staying with animals. He knows nothing about the house. He started following sheep from the age of seven. What do you need that for? And Samuel said, Go bring him. And they got to the forest. The other brothers, the town boys, the city men, they got to the forest and said, Oh! Oh! David! David! Say yes. He, he gathered the sheep and came out and left his sheep with another friend of his. Carriage fell. And he came to town dirty, undressed, not neat, with little stuff, and came out. And as soon as he came out, the Holy Spirit said, that's he. Everybody say that. Yes. Say it again. Yes. God was not looking for a soldier. He was looking for a shepherd. men have been trained but God has groomed from forest to coronation from bush to throne destiny say it everybody destiny try it again 
destiny. When he came, he knelt down. He was anointed king of Judah. He never applied. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? He didn't pray for it. He wasn't looking forward to becoming a king. His brothers didn't believe that he was a king. He wasn't looking forward to being a king. All his concern is, I watch over sheep. When they ask the other people, what's your name? He said, General Jesse. What's your name? Major General, Brigadier, uh, <laughs> Colonel, Captain. When David came, who are you? Shepherd. 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 These men that have medals, colors, stars, they call him powers. The generals. God passed them by and sent for someone in the bush. There is something God has placed in your star and destiny that where you are cannot remove. Is so imbibed there, so put there by God, that no circumstance can take it away. Amen. Let me hear you shout, Amen. Amen. My appeal to you all, as I appeal to myself, is please don't become so big to take care of yourself. I know you didn't hear that. Don't get so wise to be in charge of your life. Believe you are not making mistake to being here. Believe you are not in the wrong place. Believe you are in the right place. And if that is correct, if God puts you here, you must not be one of the crowd. Because crowd come and go, disciples stay. I have had more opportunity than any preacher from Africa not to live in Africa. If I come here, I tell three lies, I get green card. If I tell ten lies, I have citizenship. But, <laughs> but that's not what I'm looking for. I can do it in Germany, I can do it in England. I can, I'm so known that if I want it, I can get it. I can tell the senators that I know, the congressmen that I know, help me become an American so I don't go home again. Now, God told me before I was ever known, if you stay here, I'll kill you. <laughs> Read fire in his bone. Read my life story. So if I was not, and he said, if you stay here, I'll kill you. Think of what he would do when, now that I'm something. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. Destiny. Destiny. When David grew up, and God now told him no giant from anywhere on earth you can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God preachers prophets teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. 
Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Treated Goliath like rat. And a time will come, brother, when every circumstance before you will look to you like a little mosquito. Every circumstance. Every circumstance. Every situation. Time has come. Let me not say it will come because I want it to be positive. The time started since yesterday that any program you have in life, one program, two million ideas. Are you hearing me? And one idea is enough to solve one problem. That's why you are built up. That's why you are encouraged to be in the Lord. For example, if Jesus came to the seaside and there was no sheep, he doesn't turn back and say, I can't go further. What will he do? He will put his leg on top of the water and it will become concrete. You understand? By his right, by his left, by his front, by his back, there's still water. But where his feet is, there's road. Is anybody hear what I'm saying? That is the life of Christianity. Christianity is discovery for recovery. Whatever you discover gives you a recovery. You, you find new ways every day. You find new, new, new you. You discover the new you every day. Is anybody hear what I'm saying? Every day of your life, you find that no matter how huge that giant is, faith tells you, faith tells you, that's a balloon. Faith. Do you fear balloon? Do they know what's called balloon? Balloon. What's balloon? Inflated. Uh, <coughs> Uh, plastic you put air. <laughs> uh? If this thing, I have known this puppet now for more than a year. I've known this thing for more than a year. If suddenly it starts to rise and get so big. When, it, when they call me to a preach, I say, come down please, I want to use you. <laughs> Do you hear what I'm saying? That's by faith. Because you know whom you are. If you don't know whom you are, when you see this thing suddenly start to climb, you flee. But if you know who you are, you say, when you finish, come back. <laughs> did anybody hear me? I said, did anybody hear me? All right. Now, 
Hurry up. Now, the reason I'm saying all this is because of what you are going to hear tonight. Thank you, brother. It doesn't matter. No giant is too big for you to face. Marriage giant, business giant, family giant, financial giant. Just let them make mistake to come near you. When devil make mistake to come across you, that's the last time he will make mistake. <laughs> now, Where is my other sword? <laughs> you know what I want you to do? I want you to take authority from me and cut off the head of this giant. <laughs> Did you hear me? I pass my authority to you. <laughs> In Jesus' name. <laughs> And in the name of what you know. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> Go. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Bring the head. Show, show the people. Huh? He came so tall. But where is the head? In my hand. <laughs> Did you hear me? Now, everybody turn this way. All of you turn this way. Say from now. from now. Say it loud. From now. From now. Every turn that, that come my way, we lose, we lose his head. Never to go back, to go back. The, way the way they came. In the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. I, will I will carry his head to show the world. No, no giant we slay me because he that is in me is greater than he that is in the world in jesus name believe it and shout amen amen and please when you have goliath's head in your hand don't leave it in the bush Take it home, even when it stinks, show it as a testimony. Do you know that that is the last time any Goliath will ever test you? When they remember that you hold the head of the giant, they never come near you anymore. Somebody say amen. amen. Thank you as a family for being a part of this work. No matter how large a ministry is on earth, the people that make things happen there are very few. Can I repeat that? If a church has 10,000 people in membership, effective attendance, only about 40 people 
do the work. All the rest are members. They are there to men and bar. <laughs> but those who make things happen are called apostles and disciples. And that's what I want you to integrate yourself into. Don't be a member of Harvest. Be a disciple in Harvest. Are you hearing me? When members are offended, they leave. When members are angered, they go. When you do anything that... They don't like, they leave. When you say what, when you sing a song that looks against them, they go. But when you are an apostle, nothing hurts you. Nothing. Because the first thing you ask yourself is, if I was a pastor, can I hurt myself? The answer is no. Did you hear that? Now, let's turn to the book of John, chapter 2. Say with me loud, divine intervention. The way of living. Try it one more time. Okay. This story, you must have heard it before you were a Christian. I'm taking 30 minutes from you, then we go. Is that all right? Thank you, thank you. I need, I need more than coming. <laughs> I love my coming here, but I need more than coming. I'm a part of this place. John chapter 2. I told you yesterday, Whatever is in the Bible that you make a story can never give you life. But whatever becomes a revelation can give you a new beginning. Did you hear that? All right. Verse 1, listen to this. John's Gospel, chapter 2, verse 1. The third day, there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. Now listen to this. Marriage in Cana. Jesus' mother invited and Jesus invited. All right? Invited before the marriage took place. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? What does that mean to you and I? Put Christ ahead of whatever you want to do. If Jesus is ahead of what your plans are, whatever comes behind, he will handle it. Let me repeat. You are just saying amen. You didn't hear me well. If you bring Christ ahead of time, whatever comes right or wrong behind, he that is ahead will handle it for you. Listen to why I said that. When they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto him, They have no wine. He's already dead. Verse 5. His mother said unto the servants, Whatsoever he said unto you, do it. Somebody say amen for that. Amen. Now listen to this verse 6, which have been neglected by many, many of us. Now in the wedding, there were uninvited pots. Read me verse 6.
Did you see? It was not only human beings that came to the wedding. <laughs> Whatever you have at home that you didn't destroy will be used for one day. Some of you, as soon as you buy a new dress, you tear the old one. No. A good man liveth inheritance. Each of us should be able to say to our children, this was the gown of 1940. This is the gown of 1960. This is the gown of 1980. This is the gown of 1992. I believe this message is blessing you. Please visit and share videos on anointedtube.com, the world database of Christian preachers, to help us reach 100 million people. The message continues after this video about Anointed Tube. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures, click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. We begin to compare. Oh, oh, 1940, 1960, 1980, 1990. What a big difference. How will she know when she can see? Are you hearing? You know what we have in the world today? Mothers competing with their children. So you don't see mama dressing to show this is how we used to dress. There was a wedding with Jesus, the disciples, the mother, governors, everybody plus six spots. Thank God for six spots. Wash and clean sitting down there and waiting for miracles. Now I want to ask you a question. Is there any pot in your house? Is there anything, any vessel in your house? Do you have anything in your house at all? There's a miracle waiting for you. Don't commonize everything you have. God does.
doesn't need a serious thing to do a serious thing. Common thing is enough for God to do the unusual. Somebody say amen. amen. Now listen, verse 7. Jesus said unto them, Fill the water pots with water, and they fill them up to the brim. And he said unto them, Draw out and bear unto the governor of the feast. And they bade. And when the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew. The governor, the governor, the governor, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom and said unto him, Every man at the beginning doeth set for good wine, and when men have fell drunk, have well drunk, then that which is worse, but thou hast kept the good wine until now. Verse 11. This beginning. Say that before yourself. Of miracles. Did Jesus. In Cana. Of Galilee. And manifested. His glory. And his disciples. Believed. On him. Believe me from my mouth testimony to you. This week is a new beginning of miracle for your life. God who created heaven and earth started life again with miracle. God, the Bible says in chapter 1, by him all things were created and without him is nothing made that is made and by him all things consist. Just listen to how the Bible says in John chapter 2 verse 11, this beginning. God is about to give every one of you who believe a new miracle beginning. He will shade you. God will shade you from shame. The Lord will shade you from shame. The Lord will shade you from shame. The Lord will shade you from shame. From now, every shame will be behind you. No shame will confront you. Because of the power of God that worketh in you, the Lord shall cover you from shame. In the name of Jesus. Listen to this. Face where you are facing. Here is a man that has invited governors, judges. That wasn't a minor wedding. The wedding with President Clinton and all the Senate members, all the House of Representatives, all present, and the best place the devil thought he would strike was through drink. But Jesus was invited. Yeah. 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 Why the man and the woman were saying, I will? Would that have this woman as your wedded wife? What do you think he will say? I will. Would you marry this man? I will. Yeah. Now they are saying, I will. And wine finished. You know what Jesus did? He said, I'm behind you. Continue with your program. By the time you will know you have no wine, sweet wine has appeared. We shade you from shame from today. He will protect you from sin shame. So when you turn your face, sweet wine has appeared. Hallelujah. Your next question, the next question God is going to allow you to answer is why you brought sweet and not bitterness.
The next question you will answer from today will be, why did you bring sweet and not bitterness? Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? The governor asked, Why did you bring sweet one now? When God take your ugliness away, your testimony is sweet. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? God is going to take every bitter thing away from your life and give you new sweet life. Your sweetness starts. God will give you new sweetness. While is still bitter. How will I say this in America? And to everybody here in this tale, while life is still bitter, God will not let you know. He will give you such a covering to concentrate on what you are doing. That by the time you are told there was no wine, wine has come sweet. Are you hearing what I'm calling divine intervention? This man and this woman were busy with their wedding. And the crowd were saying, no wine. The governor, no wine. They, everybody, no wine. But Jesus didn't let the man wedding know. Because if he knew, he would have been shamed. But Jesus was invited. I said Jesus was invited. Before you establish your business, before you talk of marriage, let Jesus be ahead. So when any bad thing happens behind, he will handle it for you. Somebody say, yes, Lord. Don't go to any effort. Make no effort. Go to no business. Go to no settlement. Go to no deposit of a house. What do you call it? Mortgage. Down payment. Don't put down payment until you put God's payment. If Jesus is ahead... He can handle what is behind. The man was not told they have no wine. He invited everyone. But Jesus didn't let them tell him there was no wine. Wedding day is not a disgraceful day. And if Jesus is ahead, he can handle what is behind. Yeah. When it becomes sweet, God will turn your eyes to answer a question. Why is it so sweet now? Stand up to your feet. <laughs> I want you minister to help me carry this thing. I want to do, be the real me again. I want everybody to come here. Thank you. From the back, all move forward here. And to hear what I'm saying. The man they told they have no wine. 
was not drinking. Are you hearing me? The man they told, we ran out of wine. He didn't come to drink. But he was there. There's a man bigger than you now in your home. When devil try to tell you you can't make it, God is going to say, go ahead with what you are doing. I can handle this on your behalf. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? And the God we serve, The one I serve, my God. You know, Paul grew in faith until he said, My God shall supply your needs. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? And I'm going to believe God that the one this man bow his knees to night and day. The God who hear me, where there's nothing to do anything, and yet we are doing so much. I mean we are doing so much. In where there is nothing, come to Benin City, come to Nigeria, and see what this man has done with money for the kingdom. I want to remind him tonight, there is no wine. I want him to give you grace to continue. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? So that there will be no shame in your calendar. There will be no disgrace. You will not be mocked. No matter what you have passed through, God will not give you a repeat of defeat. Did you hear what I'm saying? Please hear me. And the way I have found me, me, the way I have found is the way of letting God supply my wine while my back is turned to my problem. Do you know that every time you face your problem, it becomes a problem? And many times you are frightened? Many times you almost give up? Many times you cry as if you have nobody to help you? Try what I want to ask you to try tonight. Bring Jesus ahead. If anything tries to threaten you, just sit down for one minute and say, God, be ahead of this situation. And money is one of your most frightening things. It ought not to be. Because life is more than raiment. But because our hearts are so fearful, because of our sight. That's why I cease to see with my eyes now. I try to see with my mind. Because everything you see with your eyes is ugly. But you can take the same mind. You don't need to practice witchcraft. You don't need to practice magic. You don't need to practice spiritism. You don't need to practice it. But just take that same thing from here. Today. Oh, what needless pain we bear. Oh, because we do not care. Everything to God in prayer. I want you. I want you in favor of God 
to believe tonight. Every wine you need from now. In total area of your total life. God will supply. Can I hear you say amen? amen? Put your left hand on your chest and raise your right hand. Father, you sent me back home here again. To remind them the things that are impossible with men is possible with God. For with God, all things are possible. Lord, I pray you be their source and resources. And I pray you be their shield and buckler. Be all in all in their lives as you take their griefs and give them joy. Help them not to honor money but to take money as tools. Tools to serve you. Tools to work for you. Tools to go all the way without looking back. So when we run short of wine, you who is with us, you who is already seated, can turn water to wine. So that the next question we will answer will be, why didn't you give us the sweet first? And we thank you. We prefer to say to them, it is better to end sweet because God is here. Now raise your two hands and accept. It shall be sweet for you in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening. From this day, your life shall be sweet in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and glorify him. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now.
Idausa is my father. My first encounter with uh, Archbishop Idahosa, he was doing a big crusade uh, in the center of Accra, which is called Circle. He said, if your faith say yes, God cannot say no. Idausa is a man that believe with God, all things are possible. He had an unwavering faith. He had an unshaking faith. He had an unbreaking faith. He had faith in God. He saw God as he's talking to a faithful father. He saw God like his son will see a father who he trusts that is faithful. Whatever I ask my daddy to do, he will do it. That was a Dowser's level of faith, beyond mass uh, explanation. He had faith. Spiritual, a person, yet he was so human in nature. A man who reached out to everyone, the high, and the law in society. A man who rubs shoulders with presidents and the highest of dignitaries you can think of in society. I feel very blessed because the Lord has called me to preach the word of God in Africa and particularly in Nigeria. Um, I've been here with my husband 40 years now. It, it's a blessing. And it's particularly been a blessing to work with Papa Idahosa and Mama Idahosa. When you talk about legacy, I remember traveling with Archbishop Idahosa to Kaduna for the consecration of Bishop Oyudepo. I think it's Faith Liberation Chapel. I remember it as if it is today. And uh, Archbishop said, we are going. And when we got to Benin Airport, uh, Okada, uh, that's Chief Igbinidion, had given him an aircraft. So we flew from Benin City Airport to Kaduna. And I carried, and it was there he told me in the preach, he said, This is my son. At the point, at that time, I didn't really know Bishop Edipo. This must have been early in the 80s or something. And then, many, a couple of weeks after, Bishop Edipo came to Church of God Mission Sunday evening service. And I remember the first message he preached, it was on the prodigal son. The man brought me out from the dungeon. Papa Idahosa was, he was a man full of energy and vision. Uh, he, he, he was always getting, moving on from one project to another. And often when he started a new project, we whites, we Oibos would say, why is he doing that? We couldn't see the vision at all. We thought, hmm, this is very funny. But then, sometime later, we would realize, oh yes, okay, I see why he's done that now. And I was a Muslim that I gave my life to Christ. In Ghana, there was this kind of freedom of worship. There were a lot of Muslims. And among those people that were the grace of God, I gave my life to Christ. And I wanted to go to Bible school when I felt the call of God upon my life. And unfortunately for me, at that particular time, with the Assemblies of God Ghana, there was no space for women to go to Bible school. So my pastor called me and said, he wants me to go to Nigeria and meet with Indahosa because there is a room in that particular ministry for women. And I traveled to Nigeria by the grace of God on getting there. I met with the Archbishop, my first time of meeting the Archbishop in Dahosa. 
of Church of God Mission International. What an awesome privilege it was to see this man of faith and boldness. I will never forget the Onitsha Crusade. At that time, the head of state in Nigeria had passed the law that nobody should do open air crusades. And Archbishop said he went to pray and said, God, God, what they are saying, and God asked him, what do you want? He said, I want to do crusade. God said, go ahead and do your crusade. So he sent us, I was part of the uh, advanced team, to go and paste posters all over Onicha. And we went to put posters all over Onicha. And the first day of the crusade, a truckload of soldiers came. The man of faith, the man of prayer, the man of courage, the man of peace. And Archbishop mounted the platform. And, and the soldiers came with their guns. When Archbishop started preaching, they all put their guns down. When he made the altar call, they all raised their hands to receive Jesus as Lord and personal Savior. And we stood there and the whole crusade was an eye-opener for us. And right there, I decided I needed to go and know more from this man. Fortunately, he was offering scholarship for people who want to attend Bible school in Benin, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute. And so that particular year, I uh, requested, I wrote, and fortunately, I was invited to come. So uh, we went to Nigeria to begin. Uh, my class, Actually, I went there in 79. My class started in 1980. And uh, we went through the Bible training, and it was powerful. We were all charged up. He started uh, the Word of Faith schools. He started the Christian Hospital, Faith Mediplex. He started Benson Ida Hoja university all those and well he's he's a man we can't we can't forget he was a great example to us and i thank god it's particularly good for us whites british because in britain uh people are rather skeptical these days You'll not find many people who are really born again Christians. Um, people of faith are few in Britain, but if we can come here and our faith can be uh, increased, can be inspired, particularly by the things that Papa did, we are blessed. Let me share this. And I think for those who were around in Church of God Mission at that time, we traveled to Washington for Jesus. John Geminis we went to Baltimore flew to New York, and then flew to Lagos on Nigeria with 11 hours. And then we took Okada from Okada Air from Lagos to Benin City. It was bad weather. Brother, it was one turbulence I, I told God, as long as I'm alive, never let me face anything like this again in my travel. I'm sure Dausa and the wife Margaret were in the first class, which is only divided by a curtain because it's a 90 seater plane. And we took off from Lagos to Benin. It was bad weather, raining cats and dogs. We rented a storm. There were Filipino pilots. And then they said that he has lost contact. The pilot said, listen, he has lost contact with Lagos. And so he doesn't know where he is. That is ridiculous. You are supposed to be taking us to Benin. So if you, the pilot, has lost contact and you don't know where you are, and it's raining cats and dogs. What do you want us to do? And when I looked through the wood, brother, I was sitting at the edge of my seat like this. I was shaking in my boots. I'd never been scared like that. I thought I was, I, it, it was a life and death situation. The plane would lose, dive, turn left, turn right. When I looked through the curtain, I was looking at the reaction of the Abishoy sure Dausa, who said, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And then one time he stood up in the aircraft. He lifted his hand. I will never forget. He said, God, this is what he said. God, you called me and you didn't say I would die in a plane crash. My mission is not finished. My assignment is not over. We call the enemy to order and command the devil to back up. 
Now you pilot, you better find out where you are and take us to our destination in the name of Jesus. And he sat down. Five minutes time, the pilot said, he has made contact with Port Harcourt. Listen to this. We are supposed to be doing 30 minutes from Lagos to Benin. And the pilot, we, we landed in Port Harcourt. So we were on the, we have lost our way. We would have ended up in the sea. I will never forget. We landed in Lagos. It was still raining. That is where the testimony is. Mama, if also was there, you can ask her. I told Papa, can I please go for bus? Because I was afraid. Can we get a bus so we go to Benin? He said, no. James, you don't travel like I do. I must conquer the devil today in the air. I said, what is this? <laughs> I was scared. I said, Papa, you want us to die? He said, James, if I don't conquer the devil, I will not be able to travel by air. Okada gave us his gold-plated aircraft. Chief Benidion, he called him. The plane rolled out from the hangar and we went by air to Benin. And that Sunday evening, he made me go to church and give a testimony. He said, Ghana boy. He calls me Ghana boy. I came and said, give them your testimony. You coward. <laughs> Another powerful miracle was when the witches in the whole world decided to come and have a meeting in Benin City. And Archbishop said, not when he's here. There won't be any such meeting. The chief priest then was summoned. His name, Chief Eboho, because he was a representative of the witches then. And he said, the meeting, nobody, not even God could stop the witches from meeting. Then daddy said, or papa said, Yes, God will not waste his time to stop you because I'm here to stop you. God has put me here to stop you. And guess what? That meeting never took place in Benin City. When you are with him one-on-one, -on -one, you will feel an aura that defies definition. You know, it's as if you are in the presence of God, of a deity, of something that is beyond where you are. You know, uh, he never celebrated mediocrity. He never took no for an answer. He dared to go where nobody wants to go or everybody feared to go. He was a man that believe in venturing where others fear to venture. He was a trailblazer. I remember those days, for example, this television ministry that's becoming anything today, it also started it in 1974-75. I'm honored to have been one of his sons. And uh, by the grace of God, I think that um, that sign, wonder, anointing, and his boldness. I was, I did a meeting for Dr. Maurice Serrillo in 2010. And just before I spoke in his world conference, they said, uh, oh, miracles don't happen in America because they have a lot of doctors. It happens in the third world. Well, when I took the microphone, I just shared my testimony. 23 cripples gave me the Aztecs and began to walk. Um, that kind of boldness to decree and declare, I took it from the late Archbishop. I believe in the transference of spirits, and I believe strongly, like God told Moses, I will take up the spirit that is upon you, and I will put it upon the 70. I'm one of the people who took of that spirit of signs and wonders from the Archbishop. Making a movie of the Archbishop will really, really help the next generation. Because the young preachers and the young ministers that are coming up have no clue of who he was. It, I mean, he will still be preaching and cripples will start walking. Um, that was an awesome man of faith. I remember whilst we were in school, he went to visit and it was shown on TV. Um, he went to visit Kenneth Copeland. And when he got there, they, he was supposed to have gone the previous day, but he arrived late. So they announced, when they announced 
that the Archbishop Idahosa has arrived. Six cripples got out of their wheelchairs. That is how anointed uh, Papa was. We must keep his legacy alive. Idahosa is dead to some people, but to us, to me, Idahosa lives. Hello, I am Bishop Margaret Benson Idahosa, the wife of the late Archbishop Benson Idahosa that did wonders while he was on earth here. Early in the morning when I rise, I will lift up my eyes. Now let me let you know how I got to meet him. You know, in those early years, he used to ride his bicycle with some trucks going from street to street, and one of it was my street. And every time he comes, we call him pastor. Pastor, he was young then, about 21 or 22. He was very, very young, but he didn't mind. He was not ashamed of the gospel because he knew that that was the power of God in his life. And one of these days he was riding past and people were crying in my house. <laughs> and he just stopped, brought his, brought his uh, small little Bible out and came in, just uh, uh, with it through the crowd. And he came and I said, Pastor, please, today is not like any other day. Somebody just died. He say, ah, I have been riding my bicycle all through. Till this time, it was about four o'clock. And I want to raise somebody. I say, he, please, I beg you. Don't, don't make a mockery of your God. He said, no, 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 no. I want to wake him up because God has told me in the book. Then he opened the book and read it that, uh, uh, Behold, I have given you power to tread upon serpent, to tread upon scorpions, and to raise the dead. And I said, listen, don't make a mockery of yourself. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal that thing. Raise the dead! I said what? I beg what did I talk? Again? Again, again! Hey! Benson. You mean what you say that we can raise dead person? Yes, absolutely. Have you raised dead person before? Um, no. Why? But you say I can do it. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Hey. He said, no, 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 come and show me where the baby was. So I said, okay. I took him to the room where the baby was lying. It, it was, she, she was about uh, three years old, three or four, four years old then. And I said, listen. This baby died at about nine, and it's about four o'clock now. The baby is already changing color. The why why he why she was not being buried at this time is that the father has to go to the secretariat to get a death certificate, and he said, "Oh, there's no need for that now. Let's do it. Let's do it." I said, "How? How are you going to do it?" And he said, "Okay, go out if you don't want to see see me do it." But you know. As a stubborn child, then I stood at the I stood at the door. I stood at the door with my back laid at the door. One, one eye on this side and one eye on the front door. 
and he prayed. Child, be healed. After he prayed, he asked me, What is the name of the child? What did the girl name? I said it's Inwarata. I'm a living testimony. I give God the glory for keep counting me among the living today. I'm a testimony that the whole world know about through my father, late Ben Sinidahosa. I was sick about two weeks. After the sick, conversion hold me. So I, I, I died. When I died, they kept me inside the war room. So my people was crying, weeping. About two hours, a bit three hours later, my father come, my late Ben Sinidahosa. He said, what is happening? They told him that her daughter, their daughter has lost. They said, what happened to her? He said, she was confused. So they tried the, in the ordinary native daughter tried, they can't raise her back to life. He said, where is her now? He said, she's swallowing there. He said, he asked my father the question. He said, daddy, do you believe that the God I serve can raise him, come back to life? My father said, yes. He said they should take him to the room. Then take him to where they, they lie me down. So carry me, they were praying with some of members. As they pray with God that answered by fire, hear their prayer. I come back to life. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! That is how I'm living so today. And he just stretched his Bible and himself on that child and said, In water, I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that has empowered me to raise the dead. Now, come back to life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, in Luata, I command you, rise up! I was just peeping, and all of a sudden, the, the child that died at about nine o'clock sneezed. <laughs> <laughs> Another no bed to me. After a year and three months in the womb. So my mother passed through many tribulations before she gave back to me. Then he said, Maybe I'm not a baby, I'm a wood, I'm this, but for God be thy glory. When they gave back to me, I'm, I'm a human being. And after they gave back to me, the devil, the useless man, raised up his ugly head to take my soul away. Do you know I took to my heels? I couldn't stand it, I couldn't wait, and I ran out. With him to the mother. He said, Please give this child something to eat. And everybody was surprised. Everyone was shocked. Ah, and he just left. And when he left, I, I sat down and I was thinking, What is the thing that made this man to raise this child from the dead? There must be power. Superpower. Then I wasn't a child of God. My mother used to serve, um, she was a princess of Olokun, Shango, and all that. And I said, mm, the, the, the power that raised this child from the dead must be a power that surpasses the power of these graven images that has no power. 
So the father just came and we started celebrating. But he was gone. But in the night I sat and I, I started praying and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, just touch me. I have been hearing messages of salvation from here and there. Even the church I, 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 I used to go then. But I just knelt down and I said, Father, let Jesus come into my heart right now. And I need to know this power that raised this child. And that was all I prayed. I didn't know how to pray salvation prayer. But I just knelt down and I said, Father, please, if you were the one that raised this child up, let come into my life and let me act and walk and believe like as that young man that we call pastor believed and he did this and you know when i finished prayers there was an abundant joy unspeakable joy in my spirit and the following day uh we, we used to call him brother benson he came i said where is the child you said the child is there and i called him to the room i said you know what i did last night i didn't know uh, I, I don't know how to do it, but I just knelt by my bedside and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, let me have a part of that power. I said, ah, you have done it. And I knelt down, he prayed, and I, and I said the, the sinner's prayer, and that was what got me into where I am now. And I'm glad. Okay, because I'm still alive, my father Benson Dalsa is still alive because I'm a living testimony. I'm glad that I, 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 I'm doing what I'm doing now because there was sign, there was wonder, there was, there, there was miracle that got into my heart. Thank God for today and my life. I have about eight children, two girls, and two boys and six girls. He was a man that did everything by faith. I have about 10 grandchildren to the glory of God. Now I understand the, the type of joy. The Bible said that the joy that no man can give, that is the joy that Jesus gives when you give your life to him. He no me ga jere, he no me ga ta gi Jesu me gu wese, he no me ga ta gu wese. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Thank you.
you can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Thank you for taking the time to watch this powerful video of Archbishop Benson Indaosa. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was a charismatic Pentecostal preacher. He is the founder of Church of God Mission International. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was popularly referred to as the father of Pentecostalism in Nigeria. And I'd like you to know that he was also my spiritual father please do not forget to share this video to bless all the people let this video go viral remain blessed hello this video is about Archbishop Bensi Idaosa his early Christian ministry testimony as a young Christian, I once heard my pastor say during a morning service that Christians could raise the dead in the name of the Lord Jesus. I believe it with my, all my heart. And flying around on my bicycle in those days, I went through the city of Benin in Nigeria in search of a dead person to raise to life. After five hours of hard searching, I found a company where a little girl had died a few hours before. The corpse had been cleaned and prepared for burial. I walked boldly to the father of the child. The God whom I serve can bring your baby back to life. I told him, will you permit me to pray for the child and bring her back to life? The man was startled, but he agreed. I walked into the room and up to the bed. The child was cold and dead. With strong faith in the Lord, I called on the Lord to restore the child back to life. I turned to the corpse and called it by name. Arise in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to God. The corpse sneezed heavily. Alas, the child had come back to life. God is Bensi Indaosa. Now, Bensi Indaosa childhood. Bensi Indaosa was born in Benin City on September 11, 1938 to a pagan parents. He was a sickly infant who was always fainting. As a result of his constant illness, his father ordered the mother to throw him in the dustbin. When he was 18, year, 18 months old, he was left on a rubbish heap to die. He was rejected by his father, sent to work on a farm as a servant, and was denied education until he was 14 years old. 
His education was irregular due to the poor financial status of his parents. He later took correspondence course from Britain and the United States while working in Bathershoe Company. His conversion and call to ministry. His conversion was drastic and his calling supernatural. He was converted by Pastor Akpos on a football field on one Sunday afternoon while playing soccer with his teammates. Thus, young Benson, young Benson became the first Benin member of Pastor Akbar's small congregation. As a young convert, he became very zealous in winning souls and in conducting outreaches in villages around Benin City. He was called to the ministry in a night vision from the Lord. I have called you that you might take the gospel around the world in my name, preach the gospel, and I will confirm my words with signs following, said the voice from heaven. The room was filled with the presence of God as Benson fell to his knees before the Lord. Wherever you want me to go, I will go. He prayed through the night, renewing his vows to God and interceding for his people who were yet to hear the message of salvation. After his call, Benson launched into ministry, work preaching from village to village. The gospel of, the, of, of Jesus Christ with great power and anointing, more people confess Christ as their Savior and more healings occur as he prayed for the sick. Expansion of his ministry and his credentials. Archbishop Benson Daosa, the Archbishop himself, and the founder of Church of God Mission International Incorporated with his headquarters in Benin City, Nigeria, established over 6,000 churches throughout Nigeria, Ghana before 90, 1971. Many of the ministers he supervised pastor churches of 1,000 to 4,000 people. In addition to filling the position of Archbishop of Church of God Mission, he was also, he, he was also President of All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, President of Idaosa World Outreach, and President of Faith Medical Center. He had positions in numerous organizations, including the College of, Bish of Bishop of the International Communion of Christian Churches and the Ora Robert uh, University in Oklahoma. He also earned a diploma in divinity from Christ for the Nation Institute in Dallas, Texas, which he attended in 1971 a doctorate of divinity in 1981 from the world faith college new orleans and a doctor of law degree from ora robert university in march 1984 he also received another degree he's also received other degrees from the international university in Brussels, belgium archbishop benson and his wife margaret idaosa were blessed with four children Idaosa Supreme Tax. So winning was Idaosa primary consign with a motto evangelism our supreme tax. He worked towards his goal of reaching the origin Nigeria, Africa, and the rest of the world with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. As a black African, he found the doors of African countries were wide open and he ministered in over 133 countries. All 123 countries all over the world. Crusade played a major role in his ministry. He was involved at least one crusade per month. A record crowd of nearly one million people a night attended his Lagos crusade in April 1985. He established the Redemption Television Ministry with a potential viewing audience of 15 million people. What leading gospel minister said about our bishop idaosa according to mrs gordon frada lisa president of christ for the nation incorporated dallas texas usa i know of no young black in all africa who is preaching who is reaching million as benson is in crusade with hundreds of thousands in attendance in in, a, in his weekly nationwide telecast in his Bible school, training eager students from several nations.
He also conducted campaigns in Sweden, Singapore, Malaysia, Korea, Australia, and United States, where he often appeared on national religious telecast. His burden for souls, his ministry of healing and miracles, even to the raising of several dead, demonstrates his demonstrate he is especially core of the Lord in this end time. Dr. Ben Akosa remarked, Benson Daosa is sought after by everyone in the state, from government officials to beggars. When they pose questions and explain their problem to this man, they receive instantaneous miracle solution, just as the people did in Bible days with God's prophet. The people got miraculous answer from his, from this mighty leader of God's people, said Daniel Oris. Benin City respect and salute this great man of God even at his death. I have been with him on visit to many officials, to the governor, to the powerful Benin tribal kings. He moved with God and his people knows it. His great miracle cathedral, his headquarters sit over 10,000 in 1981. His Bible school attract upper class people from different African nations and also come from Maurice, India, uh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, Singapore, Philippines, Hong Kong, Japan, Korea, the Middle East, Europe and other nations of the world. A truly international Bible training center of dynamic faith. People know that Bishop Idaosa preached what he practiced. Dr. Idaosa evangelistic ministry has reached nations around the world. He was the first Af black African evangelist to shake Australia in a massive crusade that got national attention. His seminar have affected Christians and church leaders in many countries. I sincerely salute this man because he practiced among his own people what he preached to the world. Bensi Indaosa was a man who believed God's promises and that God's miracle provision applies to Africans as well as to Americans. He believed that African has a part in God's work and African will reap God's blessing. Evangelist T. S. Bond from Tulsa, Oklahoma remarked, Many who followed Idaosa's teaching have been saved from poverty and have learned to plant out of their have learned how to plant out of their desperate need and to look to God as their divine source, thereby becoming prosperous Christian in their own land. Idaosa rose from the rank of an ordinary man to a world leader's leadership as a pastor, a builder, a counselor, a prophet, a teacher an apostle, an evangelist, a man of godly wisdom and of Christ-like compassion, whose ministry has blessed million, millions the world over. Idaosa was the greatest African ambassador of the apostolic Christian faith to the world. The secret of his success. Idaosa operated in faith. He had a robust faith. He believed and trusted God with a childlike faith. He once said that living a daily life of absolute faith in God is the only secret to great success. He believed God for everything. All things are possible to him that believes. He spent quality times in prayer and in the study of God's word. He said that if someone spent time studying the Bible and acting on it, people will come looking for that person for life solutions. Idaosa also spent time studying the works and the lives of other successful people, both in the gospel ministry and other faith of human endeavors. And he applied the principles he learned, he learned from these successful people to his life and ministry. He was very energetic, hardworking. One of the ministers who served under him said that he had never seen a man who worked as hard as Archbishop Benson Idaosa. He was committed and consistent, and he had confidence in himself. He was very humble and full of godly wisdom. Archbishop Bensi Idaosa was said to be the leader of over 7 million 
Jesus people worldwide before he went to be with the Lord in February 1998. Now I'm going to talk about his early ministry again. As a youth, he got converted to Christianity by a certain pastor at Paul and joined the flagging congregation as one of the first members. He was very active and converted many to Christianity. After experiencing a revelation from God, calling him into ministry, he began to conduct outreaches from village to village before establishing his church in a store in Benin City. Archbishop Benson Idaosa was well known for many notable quotable quotes, including "My God is not a poor God." Your attitude determines your your attitude determines your attitude. It is more risky not to take risk. I am a possibilitarian. A big head without a big brain is a big load to the neck. If your faith says yes, God cannot say no. Among others, many of these messages on faith, miracle, and prosperity remain a classic among Pentecostal. He had strong links with international gospel ministers like Billy Graham, T.L.S. Bond, Kenneth Hagin, Penny Inn, Ryan Bonke, Maurice Cerullo, Ora Robert, amongst others, and took the gospel to 145 nations in his lifetime. At the time of his death in 1998, he had preached to more white than any black man and to more black than any white man. His desire to meet the need of the total man led him to establish several other arms of the ministry apart from the church. They include Faith, Metaplex, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, World of Faith, Group of School, Bensi Indaosa University, which is currently under leadership of a son, Reverend E. F. B. Uh, Idaosa. His wife, Margaret uh, Idaosa, is the current Archbishop of the church. It was used by God to perform many miracles, including healing the blinds, raising up 28 people from the dead at different times in his ministry. You must understand this powerful man of God that God used to affect the nation of the world. And I'm glad and privileged that he was my father in the Lord. I am honored to be a part of his anointing, a part of his, of his ministry. I want to ask you, please make sure you share these videos, this video, this particular video to bless all the people and make sure you have enough time to visit Anointed Tube, support Anointed Tube, and let people all over the world around you, your village, your town, your city, your colleagues, your family, your friends, all your contact, get to know about Anointed Tube. So thank you for taking the time to listen to this or, or watch this video. I believe that um, your life can never remain the same because God's servant was such a powerful, powerful, humble, great man of God that God used before he was called to be with him. I, and I'll say it again, I am grateful and I'm privileged to be a son to Archbishop Bensi in the house. The Lord bless you.